Hello and welcome back to another Shadowlands Gold Making video. So today we are talking about mounts, and to be even more specific, we are talking about mounts to craft and sell to make gold. Selling mounts in general has been a constant way to make gold for me over the last couple of expansions, because they pretty much always sell if you think long term. Mounts are always in demand by either collectors or new players, and it's a great way to make gold. So in today's video, we will look at different mounts you can craft and sell to make profit, which also means you might need to level up and skill up certain professions, since many of these mounts require professions in specific expansions like for example, Sky Golem requires Mist of Pandaria Engineering. Some of these mounts have a specific appearance which makes them in demand, others have a special effect like uh, again the Sky Golem, which lets you pick up herbs without dismounting, and you also have mounts with special attributes like the Sandstone Drake, which lets you carry a friend on your back. So I will rank these mounts based on how much gold I make from each specific mount, which usually depends on a couple of things like how much profit you make per craft and the sell rate of that item, but it all really boils down to supply versus demand. Number 10, the Civilag ATV. This mount is pretty unique because it requires two professions to create. You need both engineering and blacksmithing, and you need the Battle for Astronaut versions of it. The blacksmithing item is straightforward as it only requires ores from mining, while the engineering also requires ores, but also requires expulsion as well. You need to craft both the blacksmithing and the engineering item, and then combine the two to actually create the mount. Now this mount very recently came out in BFA, so I think over time and over a couple of expansions, this item or this mount could be worth even more than it is right now. Number 9, the Mecha Mogul. This mount is quite special both in the way it looks and in the way you acquire it. You see the schematic drops from the Motherload dungeon in BFA and it requires 150 skill in BFA engineering to learn. Once this is done you will want to craft yourself a piece of engineering headgear to increase your engineering skill even further as you will need higher than maximum engineering skill to acquire all of the materials that you need to craft the mount. These materials include Asterite Forge protection plating, blast fired electric servo motors, and crush resistant stabilizers, which drops from the trash mobs inside the dungeon, and also Mecha Mogul MK1 remote activation device, which drops from the last boss, which is where you actually need the higher engineering to be able to loot it. Now this mount could be even easier to acquire in later expansions because I think in Shadowlands and the expansion after it, you will be able to solo the Motherload dungeon on Mythic difficulty, making it even faster and easier to acquire the materials to craft the mount. Number 8, the Steelbound Devourer. This fell core hound is pretty much a recolor of the core hound from the Molten Core event, but aside from that mount which is no longer obtainable, this is actually quite a unique design. The recipe drops from Tychondrius in the Night Hall, which is a Legion raid. To learn the recipe, you need 100 skill in Legion blacksmithing, and to actually craft the mount itself, you need a lot of Demon Steel bars, as well as 10 Infernal Brimstones and 10 Fell Hides. On top of this, you also need 15 Bloods of Sargeras. Number 7, the Geosynchronous World Spinner. This one is fairly simple, but I don't see too many of these on the Auction House, which is really weird. This is taught by any engineering trainer, as long as you have the Gnomish specialization. To craft this, you need 75 skill in Pandaria engineering, and you need a bunch of materials like Living Steel, Trillium Bars, Spirits of Harmony, and Ghost Iron. On top of this, you also need 3 Orbs of Mystery, which is a vendor item that costs 20,000 gold, and this vendor item can potentially be decreased in vendor price by playing a Goblin or utilizing Reputation discounts. Number 6, the Depleted Cuperium Rocket. I think this one looks absolutely fantastic, and it reminds me of some sort of TCG mount by the way it looks. This is taught by any engineering trainer, as long as you have the Goblin Specialization. To craft the item, you need 75 skill in Pandaria Engineering, and you need a bunch of materials like Living Steel, Kuiperite, Spirits of Harmony, Ghost Iron, and also Tree Orbs of Mystery, just like the mount we just talked about before this one. Basically, this is the goblin version of the Geosynchronous World Spinner. My advice here would be to have one goblin engineer and one gnomish engineer, 
and craft both these mounts so you can sell even more mounts. Number 5, the Mechaneer's Chopper or the Meccano Hog. This is actually the earliest craftable selling mount in terms of when it came out, as this one came out back in the Wrath of the Lich King. The Mechaneer's Chopper is the Alliance mount while the Meccano Hog is the Horde mount. The recipe can be purchased from the Faction Expedition Quartermaster in the Howling Fjord or the Borean Tundra. You need and you need 75 skill in Northrend Engineering to learn the recipe and craft the item. To craft the item you need a bunch of materials like Titan Steel Bars, Cobalt and Arctic Fur, as well as a vendor item or several vendor items that adds a crafting cost to crafting it. Number 4, Jade, Ruby, Sapphire and Sunstone Panthers. These mounts are fairly easy to make and pretty much require the same materials except for which type of gem they use. The red gems are needed for the Ruby Panther, the green ones for the Jade one, the blue gems for the Sapphire, and the yellow gems for the Sunstone. All of the recipes can be purchased from San Red Scale at the Arboretum to the west in the Jade Forest. So to craft these mounts you will need 20 of your desired color of gem, 4 Living Steel, 2 Serpent's Eye, and a Mystery Orb which is the Vendor item that I mentioned earlier, which costs 20,000 gold. Crafting one of each of these types of mounts will help you get even more sales, as collectors will want one of each, and speaking of all of these mounts, you can actually combine all of them into one panther as well, which brings us to the next mount on this list. Number 3, the Jeweled Onyx Panther. This is the panther you get when you combine the Jade, Ruby, Sapphire and Sunstone Panther that we just talked about. You don't need any additional materials, you simply just combine all these four mounts into one mount. The recipe for this panther is bought from the same NPC as the other ones, aka in Jade Forest. There's nothing else to say here really, and if you ask me, you should always try to have one of this panther and one of each of the colors on the auction house at all times, because diversity is key. Number 2, the Sandstone Drake. This is actually the first crafted mount I personally acquired, and I acquired this super early back in Cataclysm. Someone on my server actually got the recipe super fast, and me and my friends spent several hours after school grinding savage leather and black dragon scales to sell for gold to get enough gold to purchase this mount. Eventually we made it to 60,000 gold, which was the price for this mount at the time, and it was a glorious moment. But aside from that personal story, this mount is a two-man mount, so you basically transform yourself into a sandstone drink and carry your friend on your back, which is pretty unique. Acquiring the recipe can be tricky, as it has a pretty low drop chance from archaeology, but once you get it, it requires 75 skill in Cataclysm Alchemy to craft. And to actually craft it, you also need true gold, which requires Pyrium bars, and several volatiles, making it quite expensive. You also need vendor items equals to 25 to 30,000 gold as well, giving it a flat crafting fee. But if you do end up getting the recipe, this mount can bring in a lot of gold over time. And last but not least, in first place we have the Sky Golem. This is probably one of the best mounts to craft for gold making, and it sells especially well at the release of new expansions when people are farming herbalism since this mount lets you stay on your mount while gathering herbs. The craft itself is learned by the schematic Chief Engineer's Judge Journal, and this schematic is pretty much a world drop in Pandaria, so just make sure you have Pandaria Engineering and kill some mobs and you're good to go. Once you get this recipe, you will learn 5 new crafts including the Judge's Peculiar Energy Source and the Sky Golem. Crafting the Sky Golem requires 30 living steel, and 30, John's Peculiar Energy Source, which is a daily craft, meaning you can craft one Sky Golem every 30 days, as long as you log in every single day and do your daily craft. This is where it is extra and beneficial to have old characters set up, because the more daily crafts you can do, the more amounts you can make per month, and the more potential sales you will end up getting. Several people are making bank on having so-called Sky Golem factories, where they set up multiple alts purely to craft this exact mount. Doing this requires you to either spread your characters across multiple servers, or play on a high pop server because you really want to make sure there is a somewhat high demand for the mount 
if you're going to make several of it. And that is pretty much it, a fun little video that actually is quite relevant to gold making, more so than most people would actually think unless they are crafting and selling these mounts themselves. I haven't been in the crafting and selling game for too long myself, but I've already made a couple of millions only from crafting some of these mounts and selling them. And I'm on a medium pop realm so I'm quite happy with that. Over time I want to turn this into semi-passive gold income by just logging in every single day and doing some daily crafts, especially for mounts such as the Sky Golem, but also for mounts like the Sandstone Drake where you need Purium Bars, which can be transmuted on a daily cooldown. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope some of you were able to make some gold by crafting and selling these mounts, and I hope you found it useful or enjoyable to watch. Thank you for watching the video, make sure you leave a like on it, and let me know in the comments down below which mount has made you the most gold if you've been crafting and selling any of these. As a little side note, if you want to support me even more as a content creator, you could check out my Patreon through the button in the top right corner of the screen right now. Being a patron will get you access to even more gold making options, especially in Shadowlands as I will publish some Patreon only content over there. And that's it, thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon.